Howdy, Howdy ramblers. ramblers! I'm Eric. And I'm Amber. And we're Ramblin' Bears, and welcome to episode number four of Bear Bulletins. And this is where we take little snippets, nature news, and we dig through the trash bins of the internet to bring you guys uh, interesting nature-related news. Okay, our first story is about bees and colony collapse disorder. And some studies came out of Europe that showed that uh, uh, systemic insecticides, which go on the seed of the plant and then uh, are spread throughout it all throughout their life, including the pollen where the bees go, can actually have an effect on bees' colony health, uh, shrinking the colonies at non-lethal doses. And they think this is because the bees, it affects their behavioral patterns. They don't come back. They get lost. Um, there's also viruses, parasites, habitat loss that play a role. And so, of course, the pesticide manufacturers... Um, uh, are maintaining that they are safe uh, for use at the concentrations these chemicals are used at. Um, but more and more studies, I saw a, a, a piece on SciShow that actually brought up some new studies that weren't these in particular, uh, are showing this non-lethal dose behavioral problem uh, link, which may play a big role in it. And it's so serious that I had to turn to this other camera we're, we're reliant on them to make our food grow. We're poisoning them through our food, possibly. You know, just brings up another uh, pet peeve of mine, which is just this big, massive uh, monoculture agriculture that's trying to use bees and then kill off all the other insects at the same time and is finding that that's more difficult than it seems. Speaking of animals that are starting to disappear, uh, recent research has actually shown that frogs are uh, disappearing a little bit in certain populations at a you know really rapid pace. And the thing about this that's interesting is that some frogs actually produce a chemical that can help cure certain diseases that are found in humans. And what's happening in a lot of these habitats where these frogs are disappearing is that there's a certain kind of fungus that's basically infecting them and getting them sick. So researchers are trying to save these frogs from losing their habitats and the climate change affecting them. And they're basically taking some frogs in and they are going to keep them in captivity and try to raise them so that when they find a cure for uh, the disease that is hurting them, they can then let them go. Yeah. Wow. Well, another uh, threatened species is a white bark pine, which anyone who's spent a lot of time in the mountains of the western U.S., the Rockies, uh, Cascades, and Sierra will have come across, as it lives uh, often all the way up to tree line. And in the Rockies especially, they've been hard hit by um, blister rust, a non-native uh, invasive fungus, and also by a terrible epidemic of pine bark beetles, which burrow under the, uh, the, under the bark and can kill the tree. Thanks. Yeah, and it turns out that, that you know you don't really think of pine trees as a food source, but their cones are, r are rich in a important food source for all kinds of birds and mammals up and down the food chain uh, in these forests. So there's an area in the Bridger Teton uh, National Forest where they're actually going to do a big ecological experiment. They're going to clear out some uh, competing species from some white barks. They're going to plant some new ones in some places. They're going to use a, a pheromone shield that makes the uh, beetles think there's already beetles there. And they're going to plant the new seedlings that are blister rust resistant. And they're going to do it on all these test plots. And they're even going to just have some that they just leave how they are. And so there'll be a control. And so the whole area will be this like uh, uh, experiment to see how, if there's anything they can do as the Forest Service to manage these uh you know, what are really pretty important uh, for the ecosystem, pine trees. The next story I have is actually about one of my favorite animals, which is the manatee. Uh, manatees are known for being cows of the sea, and also they're kind of known for being hit by speedboats, which isn't uh, on, you know, the best thing to be known for. But researchers have tried to go in and find out why manatees are getting hit by speedboats all the time. You know, is it something that they aren't sensing? Could they not see them coming? Are they going too fast? You know, what is it? Manatees are actually known to have really sensitive hearing. So they had a, a, a test, basically, where they tested to see how the manatees were responding to certain sounds. And they found that manatees can actually hear frequencies between 8 kilohertz and 32 kilohertz really well. Whereas humans actually have a hearing range of like 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So... Um, you know, the researchers pretty much found that 
the, even though the, the, the you know their hearing is really sensitive more than they thought it was, there's probably outside factors that are affecting the manatees. So they probably get distracted. They think while they're eating or while they're mating or while they're doing something in their everyday life, they just aren't turning their attention because there's so much traffic and so much noise already in the ocean. Well, if the manatees have made a little more noise, they could benefit from my next story, uh, which has to do with Atlantic right whales, which are also <coughs> prone to getting hit uh, by watercraft, although this is more of the ship variety. And uh, they've actually doing this new high-tech conservation effort from NOAA where they've made an iOS app that runs on an iPhone or an iPad and uses the GPS and has NOAA charts in it. And it actually shows mariners in the northeast where these whales live where the whales are so that they don't go too close to them. And I guess so it probably informs them of what, you know, kind of the suggested boundaries are and things like that. Uh, and it's interesting. They actually use acoustic buoys to track the whales. So the whales <laughs> are telling them where they are, essentially. And then they're using that to... Um, to make it have a role in their protection. So somebody figure out how to do that for manatees. But then I thought immediately, well, this is actually, it's really scary because if this was like the whaling days, that would just be the, the final blow. And then also a mini story update. Uh, James Cameron, is, uh, in more ocean news, uh, made it to the bottom of the Challenger Deep in the Marianas Trench. And instead of going into detail there, we're just going to direct you to SciShow with a link. It'll probably be up here somewhere. Well, my last story is actually related a little bit in uh, theme to my previous story, which is about listening or hearing in nature. So this is actually a new study from the University of Western Australia that plants can actually hear. There is evidence that suggests that plants are not as deaf and dumb as we think they are. So basically what they did was they took these plants and when they admitted sounds at them, and they did this by having a series of clicks and noises that were actually observed in nature that are natural to plants. And so, uh, incredibly, they found that the plants, you know, regularly produce sounds themselves. Then they found that they come up at around 220 hertz, uh, and it's actually audible to the human ear. So once they studied this, they presented a corn specimen, which they knew was making these clicking sounds, uh, to another specimen. And they found that the plant that was listening, that wasn't making the clicks, actually leaned towards the other plant that was making noise. So the theories and the evidence is pointing to the fact that they're actually communicating to each other, which is really exciting. Well, that about wraps up this Bear Bolt, and all of these stories will be uh, down in the description below, so you can follow up on your own. Yep, and feel free to please subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more stories like this, and you can also uh, follow us on Twitter, hit us up on Facebook, like us on Facebook. Yep, we do lots of nature and outdoors on here, and uh, you can see right here a recent uh, trip that we did to Yosemite Valley, and uh, also went skiing, and then we have another channel, a beer yes. channel, and so here you can see our very first beer review of an Egyptian ancient recipe. Ooh. Um, so, Bye. until next time, ramble, ramble on. on.